watch. I don't feel like watching another like I got this smooth geo video on my uh, on my uh, 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 watch later, but I don't know if I want to watch that. I ain't gonna lie. So we gonna watch YouTubers who ruin their lives in seconds, bro. And from the thumbnail, I'm pretty sure I know some of them niggas. You know what I'm saying? They do YouTube, impractical but Joker really type videos. For real? When it comes to allegations or now we gotta watch one of those. What? That's hard. Minecraft YouTubers. The fact that this meme exists just Hold on. So YouTuber when they hit 10 million. Mediocre music reel. Oh. It's enough. That's it so is real. Quite shameful that that is, that is our so real. stereotype. And trust me, it is very, very weird and just unsettling seeing people comment. I hope this certain YouTuber never Got ends you. I'm up check in this shit out. most heinous action here, just because so many other YouTubers have ruined their reputation. That is and true, there bro. Are a lot, nigga. I don't know what it is, bro. Lot. Once I'm niggas finally get attention, they start video. doing bullshit. We've talked about YouTubers who have ruined their I'm already doing bullshit. Past, That's the thing, though. You know what I'm saying? Today we're going to be talking about YouTubers who ruined their lives and also there's a chance this video then might that, not that, that be wasn't supposed to mean what i was meaning like i'm not on some shit one. like so these niggas are but i'm just saying like i just be saying bullshit so, so don't think you have to go down. everywhere to subscribe but Freak a subscribe would be nice and a like would be cool no. too if you want to go the extra mile we do have slippers at earl doesn't exist oh can you get into these niggas ruining their lives, bro? Yeah, without Holy further ado, fucking shit. let's get started. No, I don't video. equal that, bro. Don't ever Dream. take that. Dream, real name Clay, who over the years has been an absolute force when it comes to Minecraft content. He's even been featured on Forbes where they highlight his insane level Forbes. of success. As of November 2023, when the article was written, he had over 3 billion total views, 31 million he was subscribers, on Forbes. and a Facebook world record for the most viewed Minecraft video gameplay on YouTube. They also Nigga. generously point out that, I quote, at his height, Dream was bringing in 200 million views per month, outpacing even the 140 million users who play Minecraft every month. If you God on YouTube, damn! Some of these niggas didn't even have, even have computers sure to play Minecraft. Were, remember that when Dream initially niggas was just blew watching up, that you could shit. not get away from that dude. His videos would find you on recommended, no matter what niche you were looking up. It was honestly quite admirable, like seeing someone go from almost zero to nothing in the matter of a few months. But this article failed to mention any sort of allegations against Dream. He's been accused of these things for a little over a year now. I'm talking about the grooming allegations, which have severely weighed down his success. Type so what shit, happened to this shit. otherwise thriving YouTuber? Before I get into this, I gotta say that it seems like Dream has been accused of almost everything in the book. There are hundreds of Twitter threads. Of hey, <laughs> hey. This nigga is like genuinely most hated online at this moment, bro. And we watched that. We watched the dream video, like the fucking, uh, I don't know what it was. It was like him addressing literally everything in the past years, bro. Like everything. It was a pretty good video. I ain't gonna lie. It gave me more insight about dream. He's not even that bad to be honest, but I'm not saying he, he didn't do the shit. I'm not saying he did, but. I just like observing. That's it. Explaining why Dream is a horrible person. I just and like actually, observing. While this video was being made, Dream uploaded his long-awaited response video to his main channel. So I'll try to summarize the allegations and his response as professionally as I can in this video. But I wouldn't do that without advising you first to make sure you watch his video whenever you get the chance. So when did this all start? I well, did already. It all began on October I did already, 18th, bud. 2022. Little when late. Account on Twitter at burner 39413705 accused him of grooming and Philia. He was accused of grooming a 17-year-old girl using different social media platforms and iMessage. Now, the thing is, these weren't just baseless claims that could be ignored. They were backed up by screenshots and screen recordings as, quote, evidence. And getting straight into the evidence, I'm not going to read everything word for word, by the way, I'll highlight a few curious ones. For instance, in the Twitter DMs, allegedly, Dream asked her, how old are you? Are you still in school? Then in a text message, he tells her, you should turn up come quarantine. To which she replies, nah, you probably got the Rona. I'll see you after quarantine. Which begs the question, why is Dream talking to a fan like what that? Since fuck? he was inviting her over, it feels like a conversation that could have been headed elsewhere. More of the messages also prove this point. For example, in a text, he says, quarantine be bringing the horny out of everyone. What? Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that the girl in question is named Anastasia. Apparently, based on her fuck? claims, the messages took place in 2020 when she was 17 and Dream was 20. One of her tweets read, None of it is appropriate for a, quote, fan and influencer to be this close, especially since I was still 17 and in school and he knew that. It crosses the line when he's sending me his huge house slash inviting me. Now, that is obviously really concerning information. And this was back in 2020 when Dream was still a faceless YouTuber. I bring this up because Anastasia claimed that Dream only revealed his face because he was afraid that she would leak it first allegedly dream had revealed his face to her before his 
uh, YouTube face reveal. Anastasia's claims, while being accepted as true by many, were also met with doubt by some who thought the DMs were fake. But these doubts were allegedly debunked, for instance, in this Twitter thread by Sierra, who ties together the evidence that Dream's victims, Amanda and Anastasia, posted. Sierra shares a bit more screenshots of other people's interaction with the victim's account, Anastasia's friend, for instance. This was the- So is it real or not, fake, nigga? screenshots are messy. Uh, anyone can inspect Element anyone could photoshop and even when it comes to screen recordings i'm pretty sure those could easily be fake too but those are just my two cents um let's keep going now i said the name amanda who is that it's allegedly another grooming victim of dreams apparently she had been what? with dream between september 23 and january 2021 see We're see this is why you genuinely need to watch the video but like i said like i said like i said I don't know if he did it or he didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? He could be lying in that video. He could not be. But I'm telling you, bro, this shit sounds crazy as fuck. And it looks insane. Snapchat and she claims it looks insane. Preposterous. February 10th. During that time, she claims that Dream sent her a picture of his penis. However, she never saved those Snapchat conversations because she wanted Dream to trust her. The other girl, Anastasia, also claimed that some of the damning conversations were on Snapchat. Part of her tweets read, The worst of flirt that I recall was on Snapchat and obviously those delete. You can imagine the hate Dream was and still is getting. Anytime Dream would tweet or does tweet, Tweet, the replies are just calling him a groomer or a file. Dream did respond yep. in a video stream and also on Twitter. On Twitter, on his alternate account, he said that it was all a friendly conversation with Anastasia, and to his knowledge, she was 18. He also said that some of the screenshots were real, but others, like the iMessage ones, were not because his iMessage number is not linked to his TikTok account. These responses are from a while back, but as recently as last month, he's still fighting off all these claims because new twists and additions keep cropping up. You can see- Not dead tweets, ass, bro. I swear to God, a nigga gonna make a new, a new a new fucking allegation right after, after the first one gets debunked or if it dies down it's like hell no bro this nigga dream cannot be sleeping good bro cannot recently the 22 account popped up on november 20th claiming again that dream was messaging a minor inappropriately this account is allegedly representing a person named jamie who they say left the internet in 2020 this is where an apparent moaning audio of dream was uh revealed i have no idea if it's him or not but do you guys see how complicated the situation is bro it looks like the burner 22 account deactivated or just got deleted i don't know and like all the dream fans are celebrating that they deactivated as i was saying in the video this is so complicated this has been one of the most complicated no i'm telling you bro it's not even a full video I'm telling you to it like i suggested before make sure to watch dreams video if you want all the information and check out the threads on your own though i will let you guys know some threads have been deleted so make with that what you will and this isn't the full story at all there's a lot more there's a lot more to this so his response video again make sure to go watch that full thing yourself Nigga, yeah we heard you say that he twice down the three main grooming allegations and some other stuff honestly it's a pretty professionally laid out video very professionally laid out video. i personally don't like the editing but i mean he, he got his points across you know just knowing about the dream allegations since they uh started popping up i literally hate to have been his friend while they were popping up though i don't know what to believe i will ask the question how do you have so many allegations on your name what were you even doing we've seen Nigga, this is minecraft bro this is Minecraft, bro. You know the type of freak ass niggas who be on Minecraft. And in that type of situation in like 2020, 2021, for some reason, Minecraft was on an all time high, mixing up with the little stains and shit too, bro. It was a fucking recipe for disaster. It was bad. Creators it was bad. Past, and they don't have it was so bad. It was horrible. Their name. As Fuck. soon as it seems, it seems like there's just more cons than pros when it comes to messaging fans. And by no means am I saying these claims are false. I'm just saying this all could have been avoided if he just wasn't texting fans. No, and dead yes, ass, bro. It was like, was listen, bro. Listen, 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 listen. It's okay to ego a nigga. It's okay, especially if you a Minecraft nigga who's getting millions of views, bro. Because you know, bro, most of your fan base is going to be children. Why are you even texting niggas like this, bro? Like, yeah, um, we can collab on music if you want to come over one time. No, bro, what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't even know why you're that friendly to niggas, just regular humans. The hell? It's a smaller channel, and that's what makes the sentiment all that much harsher. This dude really was on top of the world at one point. He was even making content with Mr. Beast. Imagine the embarrassment of not only hundreds of millions of people hearing these accusations, but also your YouTuber friends as well. That's why they all get awkward when Dream is brought up, and I don't blame them. Hi Tuppo, you have three and a half million Sherlock followers on BBC. in Twitter. Do you think you could approach the Dream allegations topic at some point? Okay, 
I'm going to talk about this because this is serious now, and I've seen it a lot in the chat. Um, okay. But I'm not Dream's friend, and if anyone cares of what I have to say, I think he's extremely irresponsible for the way he's handled these allegations up until this point. Now, I won't lie. I respect him facing the music head on with a main channel video, but the fact that it had to be made is embarrassing. Like I said before, I'm only summarizing for you guys. I really do urge you guys to check out the threads for yourself along with his video. They will be linked down in the description below. Anyway, let's head on to the next one. All right, who next, bro? One of the most insane stories of YouTubers. Oh, I remember this nigga. Back. What happened Steven to him, Ray bro? Williams, Fuck Boogie this fat ass nigga, bro. I mean, God damn. Literally went from having I forgot. Per video to barely cracking the 10,000 view threshold. And the way damn, he did that bro. is a pretty messed up story of one terrible decision after another. So first things first, who is Boogie? Well, a very short summary is that he used to be one of the most popular YouTubers in the gaming scene with a really massive audience. Used We're to talking be funny about 4 million fuck? subscribers. His was he really funny? centered on his life and gaming stuff. Constantly give life updates showcase his gameplay, and rant about stuff while playing a character named Francis. And he was very charming while doing all of this. So charming that it was easy for people to love him with heartwarming comments like, you're awesome, Boogie. Thanks for being a part of YouTube. And have a Merry Christmas. And nothing That's has real. made me laugh this much in a while. Ha ha ha. Keep it up, man. So how I, I, I mean, I be getting those comments too, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, <laughs> that was a joke, bro. I'm kidding, bro. He, he's probably a cool ass fat creator, nigga. Turned into one of the most hated. That right there is a question that can be answered by a beautiful documentary by Mike Klum. Now, I'm the obviously hell? not going to go over everything that has been said about him, but <sighs> I just. <sighs> I ain't going to lie. This might be one of my worst nightmares, bro. This might be something I've seen in. This is nightmare blunt rotation, bro. Fuck no. Hell no, nigga. Uh, I, this is just scary to look at, bro. I would be fucking horrified to be in this crowd of humans right now. I'm going to show you guys how messy this Dead ass. life has been. Particularly oh in how he managed, or more like mismanaged, his money to the point that he's on the verge of homelessness. So let's wind back a little bit. Boogie started his channel back in 2006. He made lots of videos and somewhere around 2019, he was truly at the peak of his income game. Again, all along, at least for the first few years, he had been a charming, transparent, what? and entertaining creator. He made likable videos, for example, this one, where he He's talking about growing up poor and how this turned him frugal and this one where he's discussing his youtube income fyi in that video published in 2016 he disclosed that he was making about 100 thousand dollars per year pretty God good damn money, right? he also drew lots okay. of sympathy in the 2016 period as he underwent a gastric bypass surgery to solve his weight issues now unfortunately full surgery i mean hey bro you know what i'm saying as long as it like helped you feel better or some shit you good but like i feel like you could have got that shit off, you know what I'm saying, by like hard work, but fuck it, whatever. Hey, this is around the time when the tide began turning. First, he got divorced and became an emotional wreck. In fact, if you googled when Boogie's downfall began, you would probably find people agreeing that it was right after his divorce. His income did not dip immediately though. The dip happened about two years later. In 2018, he made $498,000. In 2019, okay. he made $152,000. In 2020, he made $72,000. That's still good. In 2021, he made $46,250. And in 2022, he made 26000 The crazy part is, crazy part is, $26,000 is still like a, what a regular human makes. Like a regular full-time working human makes, bro. Which is insane. Now, interestingly, between 2018 and 2019, a user on Reddit that goes by Night Like Day apparently posted this now-deleted thread that detailed all the awful things that Boogie has said for as long as he has been online. What the like fuck? Like a mega thread of all of Boogie's shit talk. And not just shit talk, it was a thread of... My nigga, what the fuck? Where did y'all get this from, though? Did he date like a 17? What? I, I didn't know animal. that. And I mean, began sharing it with I brands, wouldn't be surprised. Him lose sponsors and hence the dip. Anyway, by 2022, the guy was making $26,000 a year with a monthly overhead of $7,000. His ex-wife had been the one budgeting for him and doing all the money stuff. So all this is happening while bills are piling up. He has no money and doesn't know how to budget. This is how he ended up with car payments, mortgage, health expenses, etc. And no cash for any of it. Oh, and while at it, he buys random things he doesn't need. In the documentary, for instance, he says he heard his TV producing a crackling sound and immediately went to Amazon and bought a $100 sound bar, only to find out the next day that his TV was just fine. Anyway, given his really bad math... I right, listen, 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 listen. I can't blame him for that. I'll probably do the same thing. Like, once I start, like, 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 just getting money is just... I don't know, bro. I, I realize that... There's something that I want that I never realized I wanted after that, bro. I don't know why, bro. So I can understand that. But this is one thing I'm genuinely scared of, though. I just need to be able to manage my money more, bro. Like, I, I feel like I'm horrible at it, and I need to get better. I need to. 
He has been forced Definitely. to pawn off stuff just so he can pay his mortgage and cater to basic expenses. And again, just to emphasize how bad Boogie is at finances, he recently participated in a boxing match to try to raise some cash. He got paid $10,000 but had already spent more than $10,000 in the match preparedness process. Now, given that this dude has been on YouTube for 17 years, you might be curious as to where all of his saved up money went, fuck? right? Well, first there's what went with his wife. Then, out of an estimated $750,000 he had, he put $600,000 of it into some random crypto and lost all of it and that's not okay. all that's why listen 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 me personally me personally i don't care nothing about crypto i mean i might save some more invest some money somewhere but like I don't give a fuck less about crypto and shit, my nigga. Like, At some what? other point, he spent around $200,000 on prostitutes. That was about $40,000 a year on prostitutes. Beyond that, another... That's why, bro. He was buying pussy. He was buying pussy. That's why he lost his money too, man. Crypto and buying pussy. Th that's just a recipe for disaster again, bro. Why are niggas even doing that? What the fuck? This nigga stupid. Another natural question to ask is why doesn't he just make the money back on YouTube? Well, for him, that's kind of impossible. He has stepped on so many toes that he just can't come back. In fact, most people now regard him as the most manipulative creator with really depressing content. There's actually a whole video arguing why even the documentary is all a lie, aka his way of manipulating people. He's always seen begging and asking for a pity party, which is far from his original charming self. In the documentary, a psychologist actually diagnoses him with covert narcissism, with its manifestation being pessimism, hypersensitivity to criticism, reactive anger, need for admiration, self-centeredness, entitlement, and belief in being special. Anyway, as a oh, story this nigga up, just lame as fuck, so annoying. One part that is just really gross is that he's been dating a 20-year-old. Keep in mind, this man is nearly 50. He is 49. Damn. 50 years old, nigga. At this point, your life is over. Fucking shit, my nigga. I mean, what do you even need to do left, bro? Like, 20 years old bro why is he fuck she I needs to go live her that. life but yeah it seems like boogie's life and career has reached rock bottom quibble cop this next youtuber who <laughs> is quibble cop thought he was onto something when he i ain't gonna lie bro i ain't gonna lie bro i genuinely need to know like why he thought this was a smart idea bro why he need he he thought it was a smart idea to make an AI made channel, bro? That is the most dumbest shit I've ever heard of in my life. A new way to endlessly spew AI generated garbage all over his audience. Instead, he is now paying for this rather dumb mistake. When I came across Cobble Cop's story, I couldn't help but side with all the other content creators who believe he's become a mockery of the entire essence of content creation. And to be clear, what I mean by this is real hard work, real experiences, and genuinely connecting with audiences, which oh, basically yeah. means having a personality, right? So what's the deal with Cobble Cop? I've already hinted that he's been spewing endless AI generated videos. This is just evil as fuck, bro. And his downward spiral based on that content has been so sad to watch. So let's dive into it. Officially known as Jordy Maxime Van Den Bush, but let's just call him Couple Cop for the rest of the video. He's not a new user. Well, I, I, I mean, I thought that's what we we're gonna do, my nigga. I don't even know why you told me his full name, like dead ass. Good minute. Starting his channel back in 2008, this English speaking Dutch creator has so far made about 5,000 videos, gained over 15 million subscribers, and gotten just Damn. a little over 7 billion views. Damn. Absolutely astronomical numbers by any measure. He officially started posting in 2011, and during this period, at least for the most part, he focused on gameplay. He uploaded one video every day at the same time. That's Damn. actually how he became big. He was consistent and put out good content. He became notable and even at one point, through his group of YouTubers named Robust, he worked under the PewDiePie network called Revel mode. Now, bro, this nigga, what was his name? Jelly, bro. His head was so big. He looked like he wasn't supposed to be human, bro. This him. Bro, I don't know why he was built like that, but he was just built so strangely. So strangely. Through his group of YouTubers named Robust, he worked under the PewDiePie network called Revel Mode. Now, this dude had some serious grit back in the day. He worked with and dated the lovely Azzyland, a really Damn. popular Canadian content creator, and Hold he on. also did partner with another smaller Hold YouTuber, on. the son of Tiger, now Liger, got a share of their channel's ownership, and later just took over altogether. Not for good reasons, though, for AI reasons. All this time, okay. specifically from 2015 to 2020, Quibble Cop's main channel was thriving. Remember, the dude was posting every single day. Then These were my favorite 
were YouTubers at one point. And subscribers. Of course. I, I ain't gonna lie. I used to watch Jelly like when I was a little kid. Like I used to see some videos, but I wouldn't say they were my favorite YouTubers. Definitely not. Who was my favorite YouTubers? Jack Septicai was on that. He was for sure. Um, damn. Markiplier was hidden. Markiplier did that. He was also. Like, back in the day, I don't even think PewDiePie was one of my favorites. He really wasn't. Like, he, he wasn't even, uh, for me, Dashy was good, but I didn't really watch Dashy until later in my life. You know what I'm saying? But Dashy was still fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, like peak peak mode, I would say Dashy was one of my favorites, bro. I used to watch Dashy all, like, bro, there was a point in my life where Dashy was the only YouTuber I ever watched. Deadass. Theories as to why this happened, but I think Only. the YouTuber serial introvert's theory is more believable. Basically, during this time, it's possible that Quibble Cup might have just gotten distracted by his game development company, JVDB, and also his other channel, Blue. Blue was actually a virtual YouTuber entirely generated Bro. using AI. He might have been distracted enough to make less exciting content on the main channel. Post-2020, as if to pivot and recover, he then tried doing lots of reaction content, but that didn't work well. Bro. So he then made a big announcement about making content that centered on his life that he was more excited about. But despite Despite the announcement, he still kept up with the reaction videos. Somehow, his viewership dipped. I think he just stopped being as exciting to his audience. Then, the big shift came when, following a short break, he came back with an idea which I honestly believe he thought he was a genius for. He decided to clone himself. Actually, according to this tweet, he had made the decision earlier and had been working on it since 2018. With his clone in place, he went ahead and posted his first AI-generated video, and it went completely downhill from there. Today, in Minecraft, I am stuck on one block. Can we survive? Watch until the end find out oh my god guys it says break the block below you but i can't lie i'm kind of scared because i'm not sure if we'll actually regenerate but let's just do it and oh, oh my god <laughs> bro this shit not real bro no i'm so glad everyone disliked this bitch bro because like dude dude be fucking serious and he was dead ass for real for real he was for real, for real about this too, bro. This might be some of the worst shit I've ever seen, bro. Dead ass. Oh my god, bro. How do you go so low, though? Okay, guys, so we just have to keep on breaking this because it is an infinite block and it spawns more than that. Of course, of course. Okay. So what was once a thriving channel loved by many for the fond childhood memories quickly turned into an absolute mess. It was taken over by an underwhelming avatar making robotic commentary on Minecraft gameplay. His fans, well, the few that had stuck around, were having none of it. The video got comments like, dude went from peak childhood entertainment to can't even be bothered to make the videos himself now. I miss the old Quebo Cop. Remember when Jordy was actually in front of a camera and not just AI? And it wasn't just his fans. Other content creators were also in disbelief at his new lazy style. He even made it on the news. And then, in the classic style of jumping from the frying pan into the fire, he doubled down on his idea. He, for example, used his AI self to react to fellow YouTubers as they reacted oh. to his AI shift. Then, making it even worse, he made how it- do you, How do you have- how do, how do you use the AI to react to niggas reacted to the AI, bruh? That shit probably don't even like register for you. It probably isn't even registering. This is not and real, he had bro. Heard his audience and was making a switch, only for that announcement to turn out as being an AI-generated clip announcing a more skilled AI, Quebble Cop AI. Eleven years ago, I started my YouTube journey. My one and only goal was to entertain as many people. So you telling me this video's AI? Bro, he really trying to be the next iRobot. Share my joy with Stop the world playing. and form new friendships. I had a lot of fun. As much as I don't like the idea, I will admit the AI clip is pretty good. Like, no, pretty that is good really oh, good. Oh, all this was going down on YouTube, he was making those weird AI clips for TikTok and posting about his like AI wife and child on Twitter. Pretty weird stuff. Anyway, that's I think it's because he fumbled one, bro. He went into this whole fucking spill of madness because he fumbled a bad bitch, bro. Y'all seen what she looked like, bro. Y'all seen what she looked like. He fumbled one, bro. He fumbled a... Hey, bro. That was that must have been what happened, bro. That that must have been what happened, bro. He fumbled her, bro. She he he fumbled her and he went into a fucking spiral of madness. That's what happened. Guaranteed.
Oh my lord, that's stuff. evil. Anyway, the only thing that resulted from all of this is that he ruined the years of trust he had within his fan base. Not to mention he completely killed his channel. Probably yep. realizing his career dunking mistake, just recently he has made a new video announcing the return of the real him. I guess all we can do now is stand by to see what- Hey, 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 listen, bruh. I'll never switch up for none of that shit, bruh. I'll never switch up for none of that shit, bruh. <laughs> Unless Raid Shadow Legend comes in, man. Stop playing, bro. This whole channel finna turn into a Raid, Raid Shadow Legends gameplay fucking uh, 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 channel, bruh. If, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, bruh. See, listen, 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 listen. The moment, the moment, I don't even think Raid Shadow Legends is a real thing no more, but I'm telling you, the moment they tell me to fake play a, a ad video game, like, guys, this ad is... Uh, uh, they're telling me to play fake ads. Whoa, guys, hold on. Um, I gotta go over here. I gotta go this way. Uh-oh. Bro, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Hey, don't. Comes up the channel. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mini I'm kidding, lad. Bro. Now, this next creator, Mini Lad, is currently feeling the pinching consequences of trying to sweep things under the rug. But Yo, I remember this it, nigga. And you don't even have to dig a lot to see that. In his latest videos, the comments tell it all. For instance, in a new video titled, I Got Robbed, there are gut-wrenching oh, comments. Oh, brother. Maybe deservingly so. Fuck. Like, imagine being a robber, but somehow you're not the worst person in the house. <laughs> There's worse things than robbing. You of all people should know that, Craig. Damn. Damn. You should have robbed your hard drive to see what's on it. Lol. Now, if this was the first time... Oh, that's what happened. Crack, I have a slight guess what could possibly have happened. Um, um, I think. Nah, let me chill. What you mean? What did he do, bro? Look at him. What do you think he did? What you think he did, bro? Like mini lad Thompson. Fucking disgusting ass. Why he's getting so much heat? Well, the last comment that I highlighted is a great segue into that. When the person saying the robber should have robbed Craig's hard drive to see what's on there, they are referring to the terrible case of pedophilia associated with the yep. creator. Now, this happened back in 2020, and while it's not solely responsible for his downfall, it's definitely a huge part of it. In June of 2020, a tweet from a girl named Hallie went viral with claims that Craig had manipulated her when she was okay. 16 slash 17. While he was over Weird girl old. two, so, three, six, four. Happen? Well, it starts with Craig being friends with Hallie for quite some time. Hallie was even there for him during his depressive episode following a breakup, and Craig helped her here and there with random things. Fast forward, Hallie, 16 at the time, develops a massive crush on Craig, and they are constantly Constantly chatting and making jokes, including a joke about his junk being small. It turns out, just a little later, they move the conversation to Discord, and Craig sends her up. Bro, 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 bro. Real ass question. Real ass question. And and I don't want an answer. I don't want an answer. Where the fuck are these old ass niggas even like finding a way to talk to young people like this? I mean, obviously they got like big creator fucking. They got big goddamn communities. A nigga probably DM'd them. Why are you DMing these people? These children. These little kids. Bro, bro, bro. What type of weird shit is that? What, like, I couldn't even take, like, listen, 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 listen. The friends I have now, bro, the only young people that are, like, younger than me in my friend group or the people I talk to are literally my family members. That is it, bro. That is it. My little brother, my little sister. That's it. And then I have my friends. But, bro, I can't take little kids, little people even serious at all, especially on the internet. So why are y'all even DMing niggas? Why are you DMing niggas like, yeah, I'm going through a lot right now. Um, I appreciate you for being there for me. We can just talk a lot and have fun and stuff like that, bro. Like, what? 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 Hey, I'm no disrespect to any young kids. I'm just saying, bro. That his I'm just saying, I just small. can't. And as if that wasn't enough, doubling down on his crime, apparently he did it to someone else. Hallie in her tweet says that Craig acted the same way, or worse, to another girl named Ash. Also, apparently Craig was using depression and suicide as a way to manipulate Hallie to not fuck? help him. He even used it as an excuse for interacting inappropriately with Ash, knowing well that she was 17. Now, Hallie goes on to share a couple other screenshots as evidence of his gross behavior. And all I can say is that he was pretty much caught pants down, no pun intended. There was really no way of him to deny any of it. Side note, I'm not gonna go 
go into any of his other choices, like for example, the whole Vanoss gaming beef that he had. Moving on, having been outed publicly, Craig went on to issue an apology and promised to work on himself. He also did a video apology admitting to his mistakes and again, putting part of the blame on his depression and suicidal tendencies. Then, in a rather weird twist, Minilad deleted his apologies. He also deleted his entire Twitter and made the YouTube video private. And he went away for a quote, mental health break and then this came back nigga. posting on his second channel, Craig Thompson, as if nothing happened. And a lot of people- This nigga think he going on a time skip, bitch. This is not how it works. This is not how it works, bro. This nigga like, hold on, bro. Fuck that bullshit. I ain't doing that. Delete everything, bro. Disappear. Just what? Like sweeping it We're watching the YouTubers who ruin their lives in seconds. Why even come back? Why? Why come back to YouTube? Like, you know, I named this video YouTubers who ruin their lives. And I do mean that. I do mean you ruin a portion of your life if you are exposed as a file. Yeah, so I don't know how you'd expect to just come back to the internet with open arms. You know, I did ask one of my YouTuber friends uh, that's been in the game for a long time, and I asked him, do you know any YouTubers who like got canceled and like, what do they do when they leave the internet? And he's like, oh, they work behind the scenes on stuff like running businesses behind the scenes or running, running businesses stuff to do with other creators and also see all fit, so please. In case you guys were wondering how some of them maintain themselves off the internet. It's literally just a hoodie, internet, sweatpants, so and an undervest and They have and choices. The they can just go do something there, It's not a fit, my boy. Because obviously they it's, don't I'm want just to chilling. work a nine to five. Literally. Their ego wouldn't let them and their paranoia wouldn't let them if someone sees like, hey, many lads like bagging my groceries and they start recording it. It's like anything but the internet, I feel like at that point. You get exposed to something, you, okay, do anything but the internet. Anyway, uh, that's just my opinion. Let's head on to the next I ain't gonna lie, that is insane though. Like what if you run out of money and then you have to get a job and niggas start recognizing like, hold on, bro. Ain't you, ain't you, ain't you that one nigga I seen on the internet talking shit about every nigga? Like, bro, if I get caught lacking like that one day, bro, I mean, that's never going to happen. But I'm just saying, bro, imagine, fuck, bro, that might be the end of my day. Brooks House. Four years ago in 2019, this next YouTuber got so much backlash over animal abuse that her career never really recovered. Jeez, of course she did that shit, bro. Like, I don't even think I could see what she did, but now I can see, bro. Of course she did some weird shit with animals, nigga. Afterward, I'm talking about 20-year-old Brooke Houts, who, as seen in this video, uploaded footage of her hitting her dog, a Doberman breed. Yes, she accidentally uploaded the video. She forgot to cut that part out while editing. In the footage, you can see the dog. Listen, listen, I'm not happy that she's hitting the dog, but I'm happy that she forgot to edit it out, and so she's getting the repercussions of touching fucking animals, nigga. What the hell? Weird ass shit, my nigga. Dog innocently walking to her and trying to lick her, and Brooke, in a swift response, immediately Don't show me that shit. Goes on to shout at and push him. Now, this of course drew a lot of anger. It went viral, and Brooke realized this. So, what did she do? Well, she deleted the video and re-uploaded the new version without that. <laughs> Niggas be thinking we stupid, bro. Come on, it's too late, bro. What you trying to do? Now you made yourself look even worse, bro. That's so Obviously, stupid. Obviously, the uh, re-uploads exist. And as more people saw the video, the anger was so far reaching that even PETA was calling for her removal from hey, YouTube. Hey, PETA, also, LAPD you, know, you know PETA don't play. So, like, she was already done for. You know Peter don't play, so it was rats, my nigga. Although they didn't press any charges. Talking to BuzzFeed, they said, Animal Task Force Can you stop showing that clip? Oh, uh, that shit scares me every single time. Rise to the level like, I really cruelty. think she's finna hit that nigga. About Thank the Lord the video time, paused. She issued an apology in video and on Twitter. In the apology, she basically argued that she had been training the dog and admitted that her error was just not having done it right. She said, I'm always looking at ways to improve how I personally train him at home. The apology was not well received either from some terming it as the worst YouTube apology later God, brooke I, I ain't gonna lie at this point bro nobody can make a good youtube apology bro nigga at this point you don't even apologize nigga actually you do though you do though i i have never seen a good youtube apology unless you count fucking dreams video as apology even though it really wasn't an apology but i mean i don't know I've never seen a good one. Even I don't even know how you can make a good YouTube therapy, apology. The damage had already been done. It looks like her career and social life ended just like that. 
Damn. EDP 445. We've talked about people who have We done know about stuff this guy a lot. Years, but EDP is a different story. We the know about this guy a lot. EDP 445, the creator who began his channel back in 2010 when he was just 19, found himself on the wrong side of the law and the online community after it was revealed, with basically no shadow of a doubt, that he was preying on underage girls. Here on the Tub channel, we have three videos dedicated to him. In two of those, I smoked his pack. And by the way, he has acknowledged my- Alright, bro. Stop being corny, nigga. God damn, just tell us about this shit, bro. We don't... On two of those videos, I actually smoked his pack. It was very loud. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't even know why you're using that lingo, bro. That was so cringy. But even looking at E, I don't even... Like, I don't even know if I could say his name, bro. But I, I can't look at that fat-ass nigga's face without feeling disgusted, bro. Like, this nigga made a whole channel about trying to act cool and funny and, and like... Uh, uh, be not nonchalant, but be more like a uh, 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 mature. But but this nigga in the background doing this insane shit, the disgusting weird shit, bro. My existence and called it the f word. Yeah, I seen like a guy that. Fucking... Whoa, whoa, whoa! The f word, like the the. What you, what you mean? He went literally to the same place, and then like was like acting like he was smoking your pack or some shit. Oh yeah, shit! This... Fucking camera. Yeah, what 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 is he just interviewing for? Shit. Uh, I think so. Was he like Asian? Why is this nigga not in jail, bro? He is chilling inside this house like nothing is happening. Oh, Asian. Oh, okay. Nah, this one guy I saw. This nigga looked fucking gay, dude, on some fucking rainbow colored hair shit. Uh -huh. Ooh. Um. And he's just yeah. smiling and shit. What he the was fuck? Through a sting operation weird organized shit? by YouTuber Alex Rosen, who did online sting operations on his channel, Predator Poachers, also known as Chet Goldstein. EDP, whose real name is Brian Moreland, was intercepted while trying to meet a decoy 13 year old who he had been exchanging inappropriate chats with. And I know that sounds horrible, but the chats are even worse. He sent some pretty explicit stuff, like, what the uh, fuck? I think he even sent a picture of his poop at one point. When it comes to EDP, um, it's almost like a waste of fat nigga shit. Who just wants to see fat nigga shit? Like, literally fat nigga shit. Poop. Who's asking for that? And, and, hey, listen, listen, listen. Shout out to the niggas who even made the sting operation. But the fact that y'all seen fat nigga shit and y'all did it on purpose, like, like using it to lure him in is insane. That's insane, bro. You were probably like, let me see that shit. And, and he posted that. He posted that shit, bro. Of time oh my the story. god! The story of EDP is like that. They didn't Gideon catch him again. I know it, don't know, no one bro. Wants any part of it? I don't now, know. Interestingly, when he got caught, he initially fiend having gone to the meetup location to buy a cupcake. But when he was shown the text messages, Stupid he admitted ass. to everything immediately. For example, they ask him, "You did double text here, correct?" Knowing she was thirteen, and he ass, simply nigga. says, "Correct." Probably stunned. Hey, at don't trust Philadelphia Eagles niggas, bro. Don't trust Philadelphia Eagle niggas. Dead ass. That's the moral of the story, bro. He admitted to Don't it. Don't trust a uh, uh, Philadelphia fat eagle niggas. They ask again. So you initiated a conversation with. Nah, let me chill, out When she was thirteen. Okay, again, no, he he's says, he's a correct. horrible also, human being, but like, there's nothing wrong with being fat. It turns out that EDP had been previously catfished by someone pretending to be a seventeen-year-old girl, and he took the bait, even sending them explicit images and threatening them should they leak the messages. That was in October of 2020, and again, he had apparently been accused of inappropriate conversations with a minor just a few months back in July God, 2020 damn. going back to the sting operation what puzzled me is that while EDP admitted to fantasizing about girls under the age of 16 he tried to defend himself by saying my mom did not raise a fucking file which was bizarre because he was caught doing yeah yeah she didn't she didn't you turned into one my nigga she she didn't she wouldn't expect her fucking little fat headed ass bald bald fucking bitch ass baby to become a fucking weirdo weird ass disgusting nigga I don't think nobody raises their per uh, a child like that unless unless they do raise their child like that. But I'm just saying the exact thing he was trying to deny. Anyway, what followed that is that EDP deleted all his main channel videos a day later. Then about a week later on April 28th, 2021, YouTube deleted both EDP and Alex Rosen's YouTube channels. Alex Rosen also has a bunch of stuff he's done, which 2021 tub has made. He don't even look normal, though. I ain't gonna lie. How you how you expose that nigga for this shit? And then you yeah, I ain't gonna lie. 
Good shit, YouTube. Get both of these niggas out of here, yeah. bro. A video about in case Ew. you want to go check that out. Just, Updates from later in I don't. He don't even look Eden normal. Have potentially been put in jail. This was untrue, however. And he met up with Tyler, the creator, one, just Ooh, about four months ago. Gideon? EDP was apparently caught again trying to meet a minor. <gasps> yeah, after all that public exposure and backlash, That's... he went right back well, into it. He was actually he caught did. again by YouTubers Jadeon and Skeeter. However, the video was supposed to come out on Jadeon's Skeeter. channel, but Jadeon recently had like a like a religious turn in his life where he like doesn't do pranks anymore, so he just focuses on religion. So that video was given to Skeeter. I think Skeeter put that on his own website where you have to pay to watch. It, so there's like re-uploads y'all could have had a banger video could have had a banger video bro nigga talking about fucking going through a paywall to watch it bro as long as he got caught for doing it again i don't give a fuck about watching the video on on youtube i watched i watched the video and uh that screenshot is basically the whole video uh it was not as uh entertaining as the first one this dude's life is a living hell ever since 2021 thank the lord he's been broke he can't keep a job he's been evicted a couple of times he lives off a suitcase in sketchy places people have called hotels that he's in telling people to kick him out he used to work for uber and people would take pictures of him saying like, yo, EDP's my driver. People record. Why do you even get in the fucking car if you see this nigga's your driver? Bro, I'm jumping out that bitch. No, I'm like, yo, yo, hold on. Hold on, H. Hold on, and then I'm gonna just stick him, bro, and then run. That's it. Him in public, and- Hell no, he's seen not able to catch up with me. Store bro, I'm zooming, bro. Oh, hell no, bro. That's me, man, what's up, bro? Look at this nasty ass. Don't get your fucking ass beat, bro. Beat it, beat it, go beat your motherfucking ass in that store right now, you nasty ass child motherfucker. Yeah, you look at you, you fuck. This nigga talk about don't get your ass beat, man. I don't even think this nigga got lateral movement for real, bro. He literally does not have like you know when you have like too much armor on an Elden Ring and you start rolling like a fucking slow mo thing. You know what I'm talking about, y'all? That's how I see this nigga, bro. But he doesn't even move. He he don't he can't even roll like in Elden Ring. That ass, bro. This, this nigga is not surviving. I ain't go. I ain't go touch you. He got chicken wing. Uh, uh yeah. He got chicken. Uh, uh, chicken leg arms. Shane, Shane Dawson. Dawson. Uh -oh. I feel like this video wouldn't be complete without talking Embarrassing. About Where Dawson. can this nigga this go without being noticed? Nowhere. Thankfully, the, the hell? The internet never forgets. How so? Well, just recently on December Ew. 11th, Shane and his partner Rylan Adams announced their birth of their twin boys via a surrogate on Instagram. The news got shared all over by other accounts such as Pop Crave. Wait, by surrogate? That means like a lady gives birth to the babies for them? Wait, hold on. What does a surrogate, surrogate mean? Hold on surrogate sir okay i got it a substitute especially a person okay yeah, yeah 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 yeah. all right hell yeah i got you i got you that's crazy as fuck actually though hold on look at this shit nigga look at this bro god damn they they looking at each other and she just over here like yeah i got y'all niggas i'm the one who did that shit <laughs> I don't even know why that's funny to me, bro. That ass. And on that Pop Crave post specifically, the comments show exactly how the internet never forgets. I'm talking about comments like, save those poor babies. How can someone with a long documented history of Felix statements and actions be allowed to adopt a surrogate child and someone called Child Protective Services. Now, the reason they're reacting like this is because Shane, who has been a YouTuber since 2005, made some horrific claims in his earlier videos. But like what, for example? Well, in his old podcast, Shane and Friends, he narrates how he thought a six-year-old was um, attractive. He said a lot of stuff. Yeah, you don't need to play that shit in this video. When it comes to Shane Dawson, there are millions of controversies with him saying the most horrific stuff known to mankind. And there's also a bunch of videos of him casually doing blackface, using the N word, and his admission to doing something really weird to a cat, which I'm not going to say in this video, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know something he did to a cat, which then he claimed was a joke, but it didn't sound like a joke. Ugh, it's just stuff like that. His defense is the usual times were different Loser back then, ass, which, nigga. uh, he was a grown man back I'm, then. I'm still very, like he was I, hey, making those things. listen, 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 like I said, bro, like I said, I'm not happy that this nigga was doing this weird shit, bro. Like, just, ugh, like, I don't, I don't fuck with this nigga anyways. 
But, like, I'm very happy that all this shit is finally coming down on him, though. You know what I'm saying? Because he's still a grown fuck man. This following the consistent backlash. Ew, bro. He's just ugly himself, like himself that too, he hates nigga. the version of himself from the past so much. Me, too. I hate that nigga, too. I hate you, too. Sadness, including Future YouTube version, too, bro. Fuck your child, too. He also no. highlights giving excuses and previous apologies, saying, Okay, that was a joke. That was a joke. That's not even a good joke, bro. And I gave excuses. child ain't do nothing. That nigga can barely even think. A lot. Like, I did it a lot on my channel. I'm his number one no hater, though. For it. There's literally no excuse. Out the womb, bro. Stop playing. Weird characters in his videos that made weird jokes about kids. It's really insane that he did all that stuff uh, so long ago. And, and, and the crazy like, part is, the crazy part is, that's what got him so much, like, um, that's what got him so much exposure, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yes, he did that. Absolutely. He's absolutely evil and shit. But the niggas who were enjoying those videos, like, yo... This guy's edgy. He's funny. I love it. I hate y'all too. Genuinely. Genuinely. Just like I dubs, bro. Just like I dubs, nigga. Like, like back in the day, niggas used to love his videos and, and he was on some bullshit. And I'm so happy that that nigga got what he deserved. And the fit, the, the niggas who made him popular too, fuck y'all too. I'm not even going to say the person I was going to say because this nigga still popular but i genuinely hate his guts to like oh my god oh my That's god like his peak it's just viewership y'all remember the shane dawson oh conspiracy videos and the shane dawson documentaries and then he got hit with these tweets reminding him of his past it's just so interesting how it, it can come back at any moment i am a strong believer and people can change i'm sure he doesn't think like these tweets or these uh videos i'm sure he's not rocking blackface at his fucking house now I'm i sure mean how do you know that for it, sure uh, nigga the hard way i would say but I, how, how, how do you know that like, for sure get, hell no degree because you did some stupid hell stuff, no back on the internet, no at that man, point i'm making like, sure like I'm Can't keeping that, that in my but, mind, uh, like, I nah, bro, he probably is. That, Fuck no. But you mean you sure he's not doing that shit, bro? You are not sure. He still could be doing that shit as we speak right now for fun, nigga. Just like for no reason, just unprovoked. So I'm not giving no nigga the benefit of the doubt, nigga. We just ruthless like that. We just ruthless. Stop playing. Anyways, that was a, that was a cool video, you know what I'm saying? A little long, I mean, but... At this point, we watch long videos like every fucking day, so it is what it is. Regular type of occurrence shit, you know? <laughs>